The Ontario Brain Institute, or OBI, is all about doing science differently in order to diagnose, treat, and improve the lives of people living with brain disorders. One of these disorders is cerebral palsy, or CP. It's a disorder that affects movement caused by an injury to a part of the brain during or just shortly after birth. We bring together key researchers, doctors who treat patients with CP, industry partners who are looking for products to improve their lives, and also patient advocacy groups who understand the needs of people and their families who are affected by cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is the commonest um, acquired physical disability uh, that, that occurs around the time of a birth. We believe that at least part of this is genetics. And so by studying uh, DNA samples from patients and their families, we may be able to find some factors that predispose certain people to certain outcomes in CP. A common uh, issue for individuals with cerebral palsy, by definition, is a motor impairment. And so uh, neuroscience discoveries that help uh, them to function better from a motor perspective is uh, really important. But also, uh, when uh, you have a brain injury, in addition to the motor issues, it can affect all aspects of your development. So we're really approaching this from a holistic perspective and also family-centered perspective. We're interested both in the child's well-being as well as the family's well-being. So I lead the Animal Research Corps in, um, in CPNet, and our uh, project is uh, focused on two main areas. One is trying to elucidate the mechanisms underlying uh, constraint-induced uh, therapy in animal models of hemiplegic cerebral palsy, so where one side of the brain has been injured. And the second um, main goal of the, of the project is to look at the mechanisms underlying inflammation and its potential contribution to the causes of cerebral palsy and looking at ways to uh, modulate that inflammatory process as a neuroprotective strategy. So we've been working with Darcy and the group uh, at Glorview to look at uh, constraint-induced movement therapy, which basically means you take the good hand and you cast it so they can't use it anymore. Uh, this forces the child to use their hemiplegic hand, and the idea is by a series of uh, either virtual video game strategies or actual real activities, you can generate both the confidence to use that limb as well as the brain control uh, to support the movement of that limb. You have a, almost a developmental trajectory. Initially when the parents come with the toddler, they're all worried about the walking. Two years later it's typically the worry about their talking. And then they go into school and it's the worry about learning. And then they hit adolescence and it's the worry about how do I fit in into society? Will I have a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Will I have family? How will I manage in life? So yes, each lifespan has a new phase and transitioning into her adulthood is for any adolescent a big challenge. So when you have any form of disability and it's not specific for CP, it is definitely an additional challenge and again that's where I see my role inclusive my team to help them transition and become an adult with fulfilling their potential. So I think what is important in terms of treatment for cerebral palsy is now uh, that we know that it's, it's important to use your body as much as you can use it and children use it uh, as long as it's fun for them to use. It. So to focus on what their interest is, uh, what, their, what their motivates them. Um, together with the family, if we start to explore it may be a sport or an, a specific uh, a hobby they are interested in and how that could help them uh, also use their arms, their legs, uh, whatever is needed. I think now within the healthcare um, system, it's the culture is really involving, the culture of medicine is really involving to, from doing to the patient to doing with the patient. So I think involving patients in a program such as CPNET is um, exactly moving in that precise direction of involving with the patient. So hearing what they have to say, hearing what their experiences are, and hearing 
um, what's, what priorities are important to them. Well, a lot of the issues that they face are life issues. Children, young children have certain realities and school-age kids have other realities and teenagers have other realities and we've done some work which shows that most of the preoccupations of teenagers with cerebral palsy are the same preoccupations as teenagers who don't have cerebral palsy. And I think that what that tells us is that we've got to be careful not to assume that everything about a person with cerebral palsy is related to their cerebral palsy and to have a view of them and their lives which is much bigger than that. So we we're going to be working with Dr. Anna McCormick and the Ottawa Children's Treatment Center to develop a robotic gait uh, mobility device that's going to enable patients with cerebral palsy to participate in gait rehabilitation therapy. So we actually started out developing this technology for acute care institutions and for older patients and what we recognized in, uh, in our initial discussions with Dr. Failings and Dr. McCormick was there was a huge opportunity for adapting it um, for CP adolescents in particular. So we're, that's going to be the focus of this project in particular. So I'm part of the technology platform and we're designing uh, innovative virtual reality therapies um, for, for kids with cerebral palsy. Kids love video games and so we're uh, trying to capitalize on that and even if we could have 30 minutes of their regular hour of video game play a day that is directed towards uh, working on therapy movements and things that might help improve their, their function, uh, then that would be a huge win.